So here in this video, we're going to finish the horizontal distance measurement set of notes for some of the corrections. And the first one of those is the systematic slope correction. So this uh, problem uh, we've got, um, let's see here. Okay, so we've got a, a triangle here and the slope distance SD was measured as 78.22 feet. This angle, theta, is 1 degree and 20 minutes. And we're trying to find what is H, the horizontal distance here. So we're measuring the distance maybe with a tape and it's along a slope, but we want to know what's the horizontal distance because we want to map this. And on a map, we're only looking for the horizontal distance. So in order to do this, we first need to figure out this whole degrees, minutes, second thing. So part A here says converting DMS to D dot D. This is degrees, minutes, seconds to decimal degrees. Okay. So first thing you need to know is that there are 60 minutes, a little minute sign, in one degree. The other thing you need to know is that there are 60 seconds in one minute. All right. So what this means is <clears throat> I can break down where I, where I see this one. It says one degree and 20 minutes. I need to convert that minutes into decimal degrees if I'm going to do math on my calculator with it. Okay. So since 20 minutes is, you know, one third of that 60, it's going to be a third of a degree or 1.33 um, degrees. But the way we're going to do it is we're going to say, look, degrees, minutes, seconds, we're going to say is the degrees plus the number of minutes divided by 60. So in this example, we have the degrees is 1 and the minutes is 20. So we're going to have 1 plus 20 over 60 or 1 plus a third, 1.33. If there were seconds also on here, then it would be plus the number of seconds divided by 3600. Okay, so if this said 1 degree, 20 minutes, 20 seconds, we would say 1 plus 20 over 60 plus 20 over 3600. That would give us the, the what that 1 degree, 20 minutes, 20 seconds was in decimal degrees so that we could use it in our calculator. Okay. In this case, we also just have a um, standard trigonometry problem. So cosine theta is going to be h over sd. So kateo, right? Um, we've got uh, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And thus h is equal to sd cosine theta. So once I've converted theta into decimal degrees, I can now plug this into my calculator and just get that h is 78.20 feet. So you have to realize that we're sometimes using this um, same symbol here as feet as we are using for minutes. So if it's, a, if it's an angle, it means minutes and you're gonna see it following a degree uh, like it is up here. If it's a distance, then it's feet. In this other example here, we have a triangle here where the slope of theta is 1.50% and the slope distance is 156.77 meters. So how do I handle this? Well, percent slope, if I wanna convert the slope percent to decimal degrees, what this means is um, that if I take, in this case, I'm going to use instead of theta, I'm going to use alpha here, just to not confuse it with the example above. So 1.5% means that for every 100 feet I go over, I'm going 1.5 feet up or down. That's what percent means. Per 100 feet, I'm going 1.5. So Another way of saying that is, if I think of a similar triangle here, where I'm saying, if this was 100, this would be 
that's how I'm describing that angle. In other words, the tangent of alpha is 1.5 over 100. So alpha is arctan 1.5 over 100. So if I want to convert slope percent to decimal degrees, I take the arc tangent of the slope percent over 100, I get the, the angle. I think in this case, it wound up being 0 0.859 degrees. And now I can plug that into my, um, I'm going to do the same as I did above, right? H equals SD times cosine now of alpha. And I get that H is equal to 156.75. Uh, so very, uh, meters, sorry, not feet. Um, very similar to um, the original measurement, which was 156.77 uh, meters. It's just a little bit different um, because the, the slope is not that steep, right? It's close to flat. Okay, so that's a systematic slope correction. And within that, we talked about converting decimal or degrees, minutes, seconds to decimal degrees, as well as the slope percent to decimal degrees. Okay, some other corrections. The erroneous tape length correction, the tape itself could be damaged. So if you have a tape that should be, um, we'll do this in red over here, um, the tape should be flat, but it's actually kinked. And you're measuring between point A and point B. If the true measurement was using the top line here, but you're measuring using the bottom one, and you read off what the measurement on the tape is, you're going to be reading a value that's higher than the actual distance measurement because some there's some distance of tape involved in the kink. So what would your correction be if the tape is kinked? Well, I'm going to subtract the correction because I'm going to be measuring long and I would have to subtract whatever the kink or wrinkled correction is to get to the true measurement. If the tape were overstretched, then the, the reading that I read off the tape is going to be lower than what it should have been, and so I would have to add. Okay? So, it just takes a little bit of thinking about what would actually happen in order to make these adjustments for an erroneous tape, tape correction. Um, <clears throat> likewise, I mean, if... Uh, well, I'll, I'll just leave that at that. And for temperature corrections, um, here we have actual formulas that are related to thermal expansion and contraction of the tape. So um, in the English system, the corrections for temperature, here's the equation, it says, hey, my temperature correction is 0 0.0000645 times the actual temperature minus 68 degrees times the length. Here, the temperature is in degrees Fahrenheit, and the length is in feet. For metric, the correction is 0 0.0000116, temperature minus 20 times the length. And here, the temperature is in degrees Celsius, and the length is in meters. So looking at these, <laughs> this basically means that the tape is standardized at 68 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius. And thus, if I'm measuring at 68 degrees, then T minus 68 is zero, and there is no temperature correction. If the temperature is really hot, the tape itself is going to stretch, it's going to expand, and Thus, when I look at my correction, that's going to come out of this formula. Since temperature is greater than 68, the correction is going to be positive, And um, that's going to be similar to like this uh, one above, right? The positive, I'm going to add the correction because the tape is kind of stretched because it's hot. If it's cold and it's less than 68 degrees, the tape is going to shrink. And the value that I read off is going to be too high. So you'll see that the, this formula will give you a negative number, and I'll be subtracting that 
um, that correction. So if it's too hot, um, we're adding. And if it's too cold, we're subtracting. And there's an example in your book I'm not going to go through right now in this video, but you should look at the example to see um, how those corrections are uh, accounted for. All right, and then we've got tension and sag corrections. So the formula for sag, um, this is again when the tape is not fully supported by the ground, um, we have the sag correction. And there's two formulas. One is the correction due to sag is negative small w squared L cubed over 24 P squared. Little w here is what is the weight per unit length of tape. The measuring tape itself has a weight. How, what's the weight per foot, for example? This L is the distance measured. And P is the strength of the pole. The harder I pull the tape, the less sag there's going to be. Now there's another formula in your book. It's very, it looks very similar. I'm going to use it, but um, uh, we can always use this top formula. We can't always use this second formula I'm going to use. So I don't recommend using this second one, but I'm showing it to you to contrast it with the first one because it's in your book and people have gotten confused in the past. It's also correction for SAG, but it says negative capital W squared L over 24P squared. And here, a capital W is the entire tape weight. And that means the weight of the tape itself for its full length. So if it's a 200 foot tape, what is the weight of the full 200 foot of measurement? And then this is length of whole tape. In other words, if I'm measuring using a 200 foot tape, but I only measure a distance of 160 feet, I can't use this bottom formula because this one assumes L is 200 and W capital W is the weight of the whole tape. The top one I can still use. The bottom one's useful if I had to like measure a distance that was much longer than the tape and I used say three or four tape lengths fully and then a partial tape length, I could use the bottom one for the full tape length parts and then the top one for the partial. But I can also just use the top one for all of those. So that's what I recommend doing. Then you have the um, tension correction. We call this one C sub P, correction for the pull. And this is uh, P minus P sub S times L over A times E. P here is the strength of pull, tension. P sub S is the standard tension. So if I'm pulling at the standard tension, then this correction goes away, it goes to zero. L is again the length that I'm measuring, uh, the, the measurement length. And then uh, A is the cross section area of the tape, right? It's not very high, but the, cr the tape itself has a cross sectional area. So it's, you know, very small if I look at it on end, but it's something. And then E is called the modulus of elasticity, which all materials have. So this formula we're not going to use in lab because we're going to attempt to always um, pull the tape at the standard tension to get rid of this formula. But if you weren't pulling at standard tension, this is the, the formula you'd use for the correction. All right, finally, um, common mistakes made when taping. 
is either measuring from the wrong marker or reading the tape incorrectly. If you're using the tape multiple times for a long distance measurement, losing track of how many you used. Recording the values and the notes incorrectly um, or transcribing them incorrectly. This happens a lot if measurements say 161.16, someone might write 161.61 or something like that. Um, calling out values ambiguously, maybe you call out a measurement, you say 161.1617 or something like that. You changed your mind, you said it was 17, but they only heard 16, something like that. Um, not identifying the zero point of the tape correctly. So you may decide, I want to um, start all my measurements at a one foot offset so that I know exactly where the zero point is, but then I need to subtract my one from each one. We talked about that in the first lab of, you know, you might be measuring your zero from the wrong spot. And then of course there's math, um, math mistakes as well. So that's all for all the corrections for horizontal distance measurements and we'll be using them in lab as well as the homework.